Hey guys, so this is my vintage uh, German-made Foff 30. It's a class 15 uh, vertical oscillating hook machine, uh, straight stitch only. Um, it looks really similar, in a lot of ways it is similar to the Foff 130, which is the more popular um, zigzag version of this machine. Um, but I think this one, for certain applications, I, I think it's a better better machine. If you need straight stitch only, then this is going to be a better machine than the Foff 130, without a doubt. Um, for those applications where you need zigzag, obviously this, this isn't the machine, but um, I don't know if you've seen some of my other videos, you, you know that I have quite a few others. Uh, but my real preference is, is towards the Foffs. I just think the fit and finish of the parts um, and all the components is just of a higher quality than, than the Singers. Um, the Neckies and, and uh, I don't know, the Adlers are pretty comparable, but um, I don't have any straight stitch Adlers. I just have um, a couple of zigzag stitch ones. And <clears throat> But in terms of the straight stitch, this is probably my most favorite straight stitch machine right now. Uh, I like it even better than the two, Singer 201, which is a phenomenal machine. Um, really like that one, but the, pro the only issues that I've had with it really are that uh, the potted motor isn't as powerful. It's a 0.53 amp motor, um, directly gear driven, and it it's, it's, doesn't have as high a top speed as the Foff, and it doesn't um, have as much penetra penetrating power as the Foff. Um, that's because these, these machines, the 130 and a lot of the other Foffs, they're made in Germany and they didn't import them with motors because uh, they don't use the same voltage here um, in Germany. So they outfitted them with American made motors. You can see this one's made in the USA, um, which is the original. It's a uh, 1.3 amp motor, which is really powerful. You're talking over two and a half times the power of the um, Singer 201 or any of the, or the Singer 1591 motor. 5,000 RPM, it's a, it's a 1 15th horsepower motor. So the thing has is has high speed. It's very controllable, um, and and it's it's uh, has great penetrating power. The other thing about it too is that this the 130 and also this Foff 30 they don't use steel um, hand wheels. These flywheels here, they actually use a plastic um, type material. Um, now the the reason. And, and the machine feels differently because of that. And the reason is that because that hand wheel doesn't have any weight to it, it accelerates quicker, but it also decelerates quicker. So as soon as you let go of the, the, the foot pedal as you're sewing, the machine stops like on a dime. So you have a lot greater control with that, um, with that low weight hand wheel as opposed to having something really heavy duty where it takes a lot of power to get the thing spinning. But it also, but it, and then it carries momentum when you stop, um, when you let off the pedal. So uh, it's a class 15. So it uses a class 15 bobbin, which are really high capacity bobbins. This is actually one here. This is the highest capacity bobbin of um, of any uh, domestic sewing machine, and this is the same bobbin size for a lot of actually uh, industrial sewing machines. But you can see it's got a vertical oscillating hook. Um, which is actually better for thicker thread. This one is is pretty unique in its design. This is really well engineered here. Um, when you want to clean out your hook and clean this whole area and lubricate it, make sure it's well maintained. This is probably one of the most critical components of the whole. I mean, this is what forms a stitch. It's very critical. All the other ones that I've that I've had and encountered and and repaired and anything else. You have to remove bolts here, then the pieces come off, and you have multiple pieces that you have to remove. Some remove via a thumb screw, but then you still have multiple parts that come off. This one's unique in its design in that you loosen this wing nut, you back it off a turn or two, and this swings down out of the way. It allows you to pull out the entire hook assembly at one time, um, which is really convenient, and then you don't have to worry about dropping parts or anything. Um, the thing also that makes this, uh, I, I say, superior to the 130 in, in probably the biggest way is the Achilles heel of the 130 is that it uses a cleated nylon belt, which is found right here, to drive the lower shaft. And the problem is that those are made out of nylon, and over time, you're talking a 56-year-old machine, that those belts break. And once they break, there's nothing you can do that they're done. The machine's done. Uh, I think there's one guy selling replacement um, 
belts, but I don't even know about the quality, how easy they are to install, whatever. So um, this thing is fully full steel. Everything in here is steel, with the exception of the hand wheel um, and you know the tension knob. But everything else is steel, so it's super robust. You're not going to have to worry about parts breaking. Like let's say you were to take this out. Um, a lot of guys like the Fafun 130 because they'll take it on their boat and use it for sail repair. Well, you know, this would be a better option because you don't have to worry about um, that that uh, that nylon belt breaking. But anyway, it, it shares a lot of similarities to the Faf. You can see this one is in phenomenal condition. That's why, that's why I picked it up a while back and that's why I like it so much. It's rare to find them in this good a condition where the... You can see how glossy that is. All the chrome on it is really, really good. There's no corrosion or pitting. I mean, that's... And get it to focus. I don't know what's wrong with this camera lately, but... But yeah, so the whole thing is uh, is excellent. And I actually adjusted this one. It's got really high presser foot lift. Uh, it's got the narrower foot, which I like. Um, that's found on like the singers. So it's got a narrower foot open toe in the front. So better visibility uh, More aggressive feed dogs. You see these are more industrial style feed dogs um, It's got a drop here a knob on the top so you can drop the uh, feed dog so you can do free motion embroidery um, And then has an automatic bobbin winder there two spool stands um, The machine's awesome, and so I just figured I'll do it's got a light on the back too uh, I figured I'd just do a quick sewing demonstration so you can see and hear how this thing runs. Um, just so if you run across one, I really highly recommend it. This is my uh, top pick for a straight stitch sewing machine. So right now in the machine I have a, a size 16 needle with, um, I think this is T40 thread. So it's a, this is more of like a top stitch thread actually, or like a buttonhole thread, but you can see... It's got good slow speed control, it's got reverse. This is four layers of like a Kona cotton. You can just see how well this thing runs. And it, it'll go fast. It'll go faster than this. This table that I'm actually sewing in, I made it and it's a plywood. And this side, the, the left side's okay. This side kind of bounces. The table isn't as um, stable as it could be. Uh, but you can see how balanced stitches are. No red coming through on this side. No white coming through on this side. Um, and the thing purrs. Like it doesn't have the feel and the clank of uh, of an oscillating hook machine. It's very, very smooth. And you can see how fast it, like the machine can go too fast for this table even because it just. And you can see how fast that goes. It goes as fast as my industrial. Um, but uh, if you had a more stable table, and I have one that's actually more stable than this, uh, the original table, and that is a better option than, than this plywood table. But I just wanted to stitch on this so you could see what it's capable of. So that's um, four layers of that. Maybe go to eight layers just so you can see. It'll handle that no problem as well. So, and you can see how it stops on a dime. I go from a high speed to a dead stop just by letting go of that foot, and that's because of the low mass hand wheel. And then again, you can see for these stitches here, really good. I mean, phenomenal. And you can't tell where I went from four layers to where I went to eight layers. Um, so that's a, it's really good material. This is a um, thousand, or this is a ballistic nylon that's got a really heavy backing, waterproof backing on it, super durable. I mean, it just plows through this, no problem. So, it's just a couple layers. What else do I got? So you can just see what I can do. Oh, this is a, uh, a really heavy weight. This is like a really heavy weight vinyl, like a signage material. This is actually, is really good for like the liner of like um, a messenger bag or something, a waterproof liner. Um, but you can use it for upholstery too. It's not as good for upholstery, but you do you do three layers of that. It could do even more. It could do four. Let's just do four then. Although I just realized it's red on red, so you may not be able to see it so well. But uh, that's okay.
Oh, I didn't trap the threads. And I just shred it, and it shredded on the bottom. Yeah, in some instances, like on that slippier material, you gotta trap the thread before you start it out. Um, otherwise, you'll have that where you'll get a jam in the bottom. And that happens basically on, on any machine. Let me put the bobbin back in, recapture the thread. There it is. So yeah. So machine is really durable. Uh, this is really, I mean, really is my favorite. Like, I have other FOFs. I have the FOF 130 for the zigzag. I have the FOF 138, which is an industrial version of that. But for um, for straight stitches, this is my machine of choice. Um, almost always for like top stitching and stuff. It's really good. Okay, so you can see what's going on here. This machine, this material is really sticky. So, so really what you want to do, here's a little trick for this, for this type of stuff. When you're working with really sticky material like this, where it does not want to move across the bed of the machine, it's like trying to move saran wrap across a, a, sticky, a smooth surface. It's just not going to happen. You put, um, you would adjust your stitch length, then you would just put down newspaper underneath this, and you run it with the newspaper across the bottom, and that will make it glide like butter. Super smooth. And then you just turn it over and tear the the newspaper away. It's a, an upholstery trick. But you can see how how great it's, you can't, the stitches are short because it wasn't wanting to move across the material because it was getting sticky. But you can see that the, the balance and the penetration and ease of sewing through is, is no problem. No white on the top, no red on the bottom. Um, that's four layers. This is a really thick. And this material is tough too because it's it's coated on both sides. So it's not like a conventional material. This is like a really tough material to work with. Um, but, you know, in certain applications, it's phenomenal. So there it is, the uh, FOF 130. It's um, my favorite straight stitch sewing machine. Uh, and I've tried a lot. I've had a lot, um, and I still do. But um, none of them really see as much use as, as this for straight stitch. So you can see here. Just go, and I mean, the thing is just so smooth. So smooth. You have a lot of control. You can literally do one stitch at a time because of that low mass hand wheel. And you can get up really close. The other thing I like about these narrow feet is that on the right side of the needle is a one eighth of an inch, and on the left side is a quarter of an inch. So it's really convenient for sewing on uh, zippers, but also for getting really close to the edges. Um, when you're doing top stitching around uh, on the edge of a material. So this is uh, definitely one of my favorites. If you run across one, grab it because they are not very common. Um, definitely not as common as like a FOF 130, but they also don't have the, um, the issues that you're going to run into uh, with the FOF 130. The, you know, the FOF 130 gets really tight. It gets really sticky. Um, there's a lot going on internally, and the machines tend to freeze up. With the FOF 30, they're a lot simpler design, so you don't have to worry about um, stuff freezing up on you. You don't have to worry about belts breaking. Um, the majority of sewing, I would say 90% of the sewing that you're going to be doing is going to be a straight stitch. So um, if you're going to have, like, what I would say is get a really good straight stitch machine if you... Um, or find that you're mainly doing straight stitches, which is most people are. And then let's say you need a zigzag stitch. Get a cheaper machine that you're not going to use as much. Like just, I mean, you could even get a department store machine for the zigzag stuff and then have a super high quality straight stitch machine like this or like a Singer 201 um, that's really capable. And then really you can tackle any project. Um, but it's nice to have like a super premium machine. Um, for the majority of the work you're doing. This, this, if you were to buy this today, uh, this would be thousands of dollars. Um, you know, if you look at how much these cost back then and inflation and everything else, these were thousands and thousands of dollars. People saved up income for, for three, four months just to buy one of these things. So, you know, and oftentimes a machine like this would be somebody's most prized possession in their home. Um, but yeah, so there it is, FOF 30, uh, vertical oscillating hook, class 15 machine.
Um, one of my favorites and one of the, the best in my opinion. So if you find one, grab it. Alright, thanks for watching.